he said that, I can't find where my note things were now. <laughs> oh, thoughts, that really is. Right, so Pattern in Tight was 2013 was when it was first opened. And that was talking about um, pattern, texture and rhythm in type is more than how the type itself holds together. How the type performs in use, the image it creates is key. Type design is about creating visual textures and patterns, interesting word shapes and sparkle. How a type image can prompt or provoke a memory, an emotion, an idea. Different perhaps to stereotypical ties to product and culture, a more cer cerebral approach. So that was um, a, a thought there. And that's 2013 and that then-ish I was probably leading up to Pembroke typeface. Mm -hmm. um, so a lot of that was look well how do i share screen uh go down to the bottom and there's a green tab that says oh. share screen okay is that that good yep yes perfect. Yep. okay well this was um i pulled these off earlier just so i've got a folder of things i can whiz through um this was uh, a, a short talk or an evening talk I gave or a conversation on um, Pembroke so this is 2014 and um, the reasoning for behind Pembroke there was bits and pieces not so much all that stuff but um, it was drawn around um, Caslon um, and the architectural Caslon so these images are from um, Rudolf, not Rudolf Koff, uh, uh, Bertolt Volpe's um, essay on, was it that one? Yes, well this one is anyway, this is uh, Volpe's Architectural Caslon. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. um, this is, uh, uh, I can't remember the name of the thing now, but it's a, it's a sample of the, the newer version when Caslon was cleaned up. Mm -hmm. You all know all this, won't you now, Jean-Francois, because you're just looking at Caslon. Um, uh, this was obviously the early sans serif, um, and the idea uh, underlied, uh, underpinned Pembroke was looking at um, if if we went down the route of the Caslon um, sans serif instead of the grots that came later, where would we be now? Well, we wouldn't have necess necessarily have gone down the route of Gill and humanists. So um, that was the uh, the premise. Um, was to go back and find out what the geometry was because the Caslon was um, talked about, always talked about as being quite a geometric typeface and not a humanistic one as it would have been later or the grots later. Um, this is what it turned in, well this is, this was um, the Flaxman thing, this is up in Derbyshire, one of the early um, sand, sort of serifless inscriptions. Um, but anyway, Looking at Caslon, um, even though this was the newer cleaned up Caslon, this was um, drawing geometry over um, the letters and just seeing what was what, what made Caslon um, uniquely English at the time, even though it came from Dutch origins. So it was really looking at the beginnings of um, the, the British type design, um, or the, the foundation of type design in, in uh, or type manufacture in Britain. Um, so you can see that the O is a perfect circle, the A was pretty much a triangle or equilateral um, and the M was pretty much square. When that was patterned out across the rest of the caps you could see that everything was becoming um, more square, more the, um, the British vernacular which um, James Mosley talked about a bit later on. Um, so Regency style even though it was um, cleaned up Caslon, early Caslon wouldn't have been like this. Um, and Pembroke just, I, all I did was put uh, a sans serif letter form over that. The lower case is interesting um, because even though the geometry follows through with the circles, um, I took liberties over descender depth. Um, but the M, normally you'd, ma you'd make a lowercase M wider, but the Caslon one is actually quite condensed. So I kept that in it. And this started. Um, well, I'll come back to that. The other thing was in a sans serif, you tend to um, match lowercase terminals to capital terminals, whereas in serif, you tend not to. The caps do their own thing because they are their own set and the minuscules are their own as well. So bulbs and tapers would end differently. Um, so all I did was make the bulb and a taper oblique and serifs horizontal or vertical. 
um, and that was a premise for that. But what what um, was interesting with this was how it set. Um, well, that's the rest of the thing. Was how it set in, in text text use. Is that stopped now or not? Yeah. Yes. yes, yes. Yeah. Um, what was interesting was how it. Uh, how uh, Pembroke was set, uh, what came out of the box um, without minimal kerning, once the, the fit was done. Um, so that got me th thinking a lot more about um, the texture of a type image. So you, not only got the shape, but um, the individual proportioning um, of each letter and how important that was. And um, that over time has now gone into things like the most up-to-date one, which was, well, let's open up this one as well. And share this. Can I ask you a, you a question? Yep. Uh, about the lower case, because uh, uh, it seems to be a, a very strong characteristic to have um, some letter like the M quite narrow versus the B or letter like that quite mm. wide. I had noticed that. I found the M, usually I design an M a bit wider, less, less than the space of an N, but, um, but, but Caslon is very condensed. Yes, um, yes. So yes. It, w it was unusual and st stuck out because of that. But but at the same time, it was fine in text, and it became part of its DNA. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, this was um, for plug and play last year up in um, Portugal in Porto, um, and this was a collection of some of the comments of which the type image one um, or texture figures quite a lot in there. So this was looking at principles. Where's my principles? Yeah, principles of type, um, which was um, a something else. <coughs> which one was visual harmony? Now, we, we, this was um, Dove's Bible, and uh, same with Bembo. Um, metal Bembo makes a, a beautiful texture. Uh, the Dove's Bible does as well. Dove's Bible is only one point side, one weight, sixteen point, um, and it, it sets incredibly well. Um, but individually, the characters are sort of a bit of a mishmash, but it, it makes a nice setting. Um, this was an interesting thing. This was um, Bembo, it's digital Bembo. No, it's not. This is um, uh, Harlem, isn't it? Sorry, different one. So this is the last metal um, printed book at uh, Enskede. And again, this, this sets well. This is um, Jan, uh, Jan van Krimpen. Um, this is... Um, What's his name? <laughs> Jeffrey Dowding and his principles of setting. Dowding is sort of the UK's, well, a bit like Fossil, but the UK's um, uh, Jan Chickold. Um, he advocated close word spacing, um, rag, rag right text setting, um, very clean, um, beautiful typography. Um, this is, uh, uh, which one's this one? This is the big book. On Pouché types. Um, this is uh, another texture, which is um, uh, Civilise. Uh, this is the Bembo. This is a um, metal Bembo, but what, what, this was a special cut um, that a designer called Phil Cleaver commissioned. And what he wanted Monotype to do was um, to get rid of, to make metal, uh, digital Bembo, and that's how it appears. And eventually, I think this version turned into. The, the newer Bembo that Monotype released, which he was a bit knocked about because he uh, funded it. But, and this sets um, pretty much comparably to Metal Bembo, except without the squash. So that was an interesting thing to see. And I chatted to him quite a bit about this. Um, and in, in the light of how digital type, uh, it's a different aesthetic. And I've always been intrigued in, in wanting to, um, in, in how, the best of metal setting always seems to um, produce something that, that's more agreeable to the eye. And I'd, I'd like to try and match that digitally, but without um, pastiche. So it's not a question of um, faking a, um, or you know, doing a fake, like Polyphilus was a fake. Um, it's just using the technology to do it, but being clever with it. When I did um, Kingfisher, I looked at um, adding sort of slight wobble to the text to, to create a more interesting line to keep the eye alive. So it's not just replication. Um, oh, there it is, yeah, Kingfisher. So this was um, 
looking at so there you can see um, where the on the middle left hand side there's all different axes to the letters um, there was also top left was pushing and pulling um, the stem to add a, an optical slant to the text without making a slant um, you can sort of see it there in digital that there's little bits so that the crossbar the t and the f aren't the same they're swelling the end like like in bembo the end sort of arcs around slightly bends a bit just little bits to add a uh, visual texture often your serifs are all slightly different different lengths um, that was the aim of that one again sort of visual texture and patterning um, this is something different let me whiz past this one and see if i come back to their different ideas Um, I suppose this one does, yes, Fenland does. Um, Fenland was looking at um, constructing letter shapes. So um, instead of a pen driven shape, it's actually taking what the elements are that make up a shape and putting them together in different ways and then allowing the, the pattern um, of the texture. Um, so it, to keep it live, it, it, it needed to have um, relief. So it's not monoline, where you get junctions um, in, in a, you always get a movement in a typeface. So here, in order to, to keep, the, keep the letter shape visually interesting, the pattern interesting, um, the, uh, the thicks and thins were put in different places, not necessarily um, uh, contrasted, it's just in different places and then evened out across the, the pattern. So a lot of this was, say, looking at some um, pixel grids, and if you read a constructed letter shape on screen, you don't re read a pen shape on screen. So really it was, it was thinking that way, and then starting to develop shapes around that. And some shapes could become more abstract, other shapes were more true to their, um, uh, their, 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 their initial outline. Say with the, the F, instead of being um, a two straight, a two stroke, creation as a pen might do, it was made out of three strokes. And that allowed me to put um, um, a relief in, the, in the, um, the waiting in the middle of the character as opposed to maybe at the terminal or at a, where the pen would do it. And then the end, the, um, even though you still have to have um, a light to a heavy meeting at the junction of the arch to the stem, you could fool it by shifting the, the outer curve over so then the relief comes on the other side. And in text setting, if the patterning was all um, evened out, you wouldn't necessarily uh, see it as weird. The patterning, um, the, the illusion would make readable text. And then the question then comes is how much uh, do we read the letter shape or do we read um, uh, the word shape or the text image? What are we actually looking at? what becomes trouble, troubling to the eye, what hinders letter and hinders the readability as opposed to what um, uh, helps readability. Um, does um, the texture and the pattern, is that as important as the word shape or is it sometimes more important? If we go back to the very beginning of this, I remember I had some pictures of dis re-disturbed all the way back. All right, so this was um, uh, one of the first books I got years ago. Um, and in here, Bradley Thompson in the 50s um, was looking at um, ideas of um, making a unicase alphabet, um, but making it readable. So every letter was its own shape. So you didn't get two forms for like cap A and lowercase a or uppercase G and lowercase G. It's just one shape for each one. And these, these two versions are 10 years apart. The top one is, I think, is something like uh, 1946, maybe, and the bottom one might be 56 or 60s, something. And here he had a bit more money in, in the second one because he could uh, have special characters cut. So beforehand, he, had, he mixed small caps. As you can see, the, the I in painting is slightly taller than the lowercase, so is the T and the G, because they're small caps um, sorted with the lowercase. But later on, he had a bit more money, so they had special characters, four characters cut in order to range better with the text. But what happened was um, it, it, it wasn't as good as the first one. The first one 
had more, had more rhythm to it. <clears throat> the second one was graphic design better, um, but it actually didn't work. Um, the I and the N uh, now look like a badly formed N. You know, it's, it was just it was, it was more messy, and you can see here. There's a if you can if your eyes drift around, you can sort of read it. But say middle, if you see an I and an M in the word fitting, for instance, um, sort of middle slightly to the right, where it says result in poor fitting, the double T um, creates too much of a hole. Then the I and the N is too close. I know this is it was metal set or whatever, um, but it was just or photo set. But it was a it wasn't thought about. So the, the whole point of doing it was destroyed by um, uh, lack of what he was actually looking at. So, you know, as designers, you should use your eyes and question things, not just accept things. And that's another thing that we as type designers tend to do. It's very hard to look at a shape as an abstract shape. You always read it as a letter. And it's um, hard to flip it in your head and see it as a shape first and a letter second. Um, this was a close-up of, of, of what he had and you know, since, we can re read the word since, um, but if you look at it long enough, it just looks wrong. The I and the N just look wrong. Um, they don't work. Um, so th this prompted me to um, design Disturbance. This is back in 1991 originally. Um, and then I redid it, um, I thought 20 odd years later, whenever it was. Um, to make redisturbed and redisturbed was really readdressing um, all, all the movement. So here I put in, instead of reading small caps, I changed the texture by adding vertical movement with the senders and descenders um, and made sure that to avoid things, to avoid possible um, confusion over letter combination. So the, the letters were chosen to make sure that when they appear together, they wouldn't get Odd, odd spacing or odd um, uh, unwanted um, uh, wrong letter. So I in the end wouldn't make an N. Um, and then the redraw that allowed, took that further. So I had optical scaling. I put in all the nice niceties of uh, modern type. So you have swashes, you have superiors, all sorts of bits and pieces. So the only thing that would hinder text um, would be the fact of the unusual combination of only 26 symbols. Um, you couldn't you couldn't argue it uh, in other ways. It's not it swears a lot of monotype uh, monocase alphabets or unicase alphabets are more graphic design led, not solving problems of readability. Anyway, let me. So that's another thing on texture patterning. And if I whiz to the very end, right. So this one now is um, shape manipulation, but again, it's looking at some. Um, reworking the shapes as another way of um, changing the pattern, the texture. So here, this was um, uh, in, a lot of the inspiration of this came from Valenciaga, an exhibition on the fashion designer and how he changed the silhouette. So instead of saying a, a waistline, he had um, the, the half fitted or the barrel, barrel line. And you can see here the semi fitted jacket. So instead of it tucking in, it becomes something different. Um, again, different shapes. Mm -hmm. But we still they're still clothing, still f functional as clothing. So could this this idea be put into um, well, maybe not? But could this idea be put into letter shapes? How much can you change and distort a letter shape so it doesn't become so it doesn't destroy its recognizable and readability? Um, same with arts, you know. So this is um, uh, Alfred Wallace. We 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 can accept this as being a painting of boats and a harbour. Um, even though he painted very much naively. So the boat is, he couldn't understand why a boat can't be flat or when it's going into port, it, it's going into ports sideways and down, you know, so it's not, there's no perspective, it's, it's a map. But we still, we, we're still clever enough to read it. So really it's, the question is how much can you change things so our brain can still perceive a shape and a pattern. Um, the other inspirations for this was, um, uh, abstract, uh, principally German abstract, um, well, well, the painting and everything else, and the De Brucke movement. Again, so crude shapes, which um, with slight only gestures, but you can understand what it is, what it's trying to do.
This is Preissig, a Czech designer, similar time to um, De Bruyne and German Expressionism of 1900s, 1904, five-ish. And he wanted to cut shapes um, without uh, curves and make them harder, a harder shape. This is Ralph Bayer, a Coventry Cathedral in the UK. Big, um, big stone cut thing, but purposefully awkward. But in the context of what they are, <coughs> they work very well. But um, there's a lot of controversy of whether it's good or bad. So um, to, to Brooker was really looking at um, the shape and seeing how much I could change the uh, design the letter shape from the outside in. So there's no skeleton to it. It's pushing and pulling the outside shapes, the, both edges together. And, and, and by, by pushing the edges, you can see in the G that's shaded in. If I move one up and one down, it naturally puts in a pressure release point as the kind of ideas I had in Fenland, where something has to give somewhere. You have to have um, um, thick and thins to some degree in order to define the shape. And then th these are carried through into pencil, but by pushing and shoving shapes around, um, I could um, tuck as you can see with a cap K and the cap C, if you can tuck in um, uh, the, the curve into the other areas to get a denser, tighter fit. With a lowercase K in the N and the U, <clears throat> you can see how the, the shape is adapted so it fits in to the letters on each side of it. And that's how that came together. So again, the texture and the patterning was, was purposefully um, approached more by forcing the shape to do things as opposed to making the shapes themselves. Um, trying to flip my head the other way around. So that, that's that one. I turned the wrong one, didn't I? Um, oh, I see. So I've got to do this. Yeah? Yes. Mm. Yep. Okay. Um, so this was looking at um, texture or um, the, the, te the, the patterning. All I wanted to do was um, design a typeface for this client. So um, very much in, in uh, so when it sets, it was just sort of perfectly even. There's, there's nothing. Uh, come on, in you go. The dog's just turned up. Stay there. Um, but, um, I suppose the ideas of like the 1950s, where Frutigas was, and then um, the early ones, the DINs, and obviously the later, um, the OCRs, where there were constructed types, but instead of them being hard and um, no humanity in it or warmth, as I say, there to get rid of the mechanical thing and make it make um, what did I say here, add a warmth to the industrial sands. Um, so using the technology you can nowadays to solve a lot of the problems that were there before. Um, if my cursor is wiggling, you'll see that on um, the Frutiger thing, what fascinated, fascinated me about this was this little uh, wriggle here and what he's looking at here. Um, and that, hang on, where's the next one? that tied up with um, his idea here about spacing and the rhythm of stems. Um, has, any, have you, has anybody got um, Frank Blockland's thesis? Yeah. His doctorate. Yeah. Jean-Francois, do you know that one? I'm not in a um, um, fungible... Uh, uh, yeah. Hang on, how do I keep going in and out of this? That one. Yeah, not in fungible version of um, PDF, I think. Sorry. No. Um, it's good. He did all this, um, he did a lot of looking at um, fence post, what he calls fence posting. I don't know if that's a known thing. So it was, um, it was organizing the, the stems. Let me go back to this. So it's really sort of seeing how much you can control the pattern of, of the type 
as you do in a cell. If the cell is filling the gap, so all the stems can be evenly placed, then a sans cell, if you haven't got the serif, so there's always going to be a, 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 an asymmetric rhythm, if you like. So I was questioning how much you can change the proportions in order to maintain um, an even rhythm running through. Obviously, you know, it's impossible because of the different shapes of letters. Um, but how, how far could you go with it? Um, and you know, this was um, constructed through, there were lots of things within here. There's um, tweaking different details. That was the other thing. Anyway, that's something else now. So after all that waffle, um, my, my, my big thing is um, type, the image or the patterning of type. Um, and that's something that occupies my mind um, a huge amount. So I don't know if that was um, of use to anybody. <laughs> I wasn't expecting to do all that, so there you go. Well, um, yes, thank you for the first time. You're afraid it's already gone. He got tired, he fell asleep. So uh, we can um, go through the question right now, yes? I, I think it'd be easier to do that because I've touched on things which I've put down for that. So, um, yeah. Um, so, um, um, maybe we will ask, um, I will put on the, um, you know, there is a chat thing. Yes, you see the chat thing. Uh, so, like that, the people can follow. Um, so, I, I put the, the question in the wrong order, but let's start with this one. Which one? Uh, on, on the chat, on the um, Zoom chat. Okay. Yeah. The RJ Wiggins Inuit question. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, yes, yes. Hang on, what did I say was that one? Um, I suppose with um, See, I move these around. Okay, Inuits. Well, that's, that was an odd one because it was a commission for a, um, a new paper, R.J. Wiggins' paper, um, as a marketer. This is before you did yours, Jean-Francois. Um, probably about two or three years before they, they developed a that set. Um, and the, the, the new white stock, recording knew it, so the design company Blast had the idea of um, doing a typeface to give away to designers at the launch. So that's where that came from. So my, my job was to make a usable typeface that reflected um, the Inuit's uh, syllabic symbols. Um, so in a way, it's an odd thing. It's um, um, the second part of the question being the, what are the do's and don'ts um, of different scripts? Um, it's an odd one because it wasn't really making a, an Inuit or an, an up to touch script. It was making a, a typeface for marketing. Um, based on that. So what I did was to take uh, the, let's hang on, let's bring up the, what it was was to take, um, these are the uh, syllabic symbols and how they work against you can sort of see so that the uh, the sounds that they make um, and how they put they're put together to make um, their, their syllabic language the taking those and putting those together got a, a very strange sort of pattern which didn't work so redrawing that this is an in up to as it says um, putting them together, pulling things in and out, um, and taking elements and trying to make those into recognisable shapes um, was, was part of this. It was a lost opportunity. There were other ideas about whether or not, because there's no capitals or lower, uh, you know, there's no way of just saying what a capital is in, in um, the Inuit, Inuit uh, syllabi. So the, the way to Obviously, we use caps, so do I duplicate them? Was there an opportunity to put a marker in front in order to, to denote a cap? Um, uh, what about accents? How do those things work? But then if I put a marker, it becomes too messy. 
so it, it was there was lots of things things that didn't work in the end so we we just um well, it's, it's quite simple we just put it, it through into 26 symbols there were alternates because the design company wanted alternates um but these are the best these are the, the core shapes it was a missed opportunity because um uh, I asked the client if they wanted me to take it to cover the wider European languages and also um, more weights, but they said no. So even though it was scoped out to be, you know, full um, full EU support, you know, um, Central Eastern European, um, and go from thin to heavy, it was never done, which is a shame. Um, uh, but. Following on from that question, another one which was interesting was um, the alien one. Because this one was, um, this was instead of taking different scripts, this was inventing a script um, uh, as an alien typeface. Uh, so th this was more fun um, to, to give uh, these, these characters here for the children's hospital their own language or visual language. So I just I plundered a lot of um, dead scripts and looked at those and took elements that didn't look too corny, if you like, or ideas that were interesting, um, shapes and repetitions, um, and put those into, um, built a whole backstory for these aliens about how their scripts originated and um, how it's aligned. Originally, it came across the centre line, um, and then I gave them zones, and so they were all squared, and then they they, they moved above and below across the centre, and um, duplicate. Uh, I put in different tone marks to uh, to denote um, uh, vowel combinations, and then there was uh, I think another bit. Oh yes, and there were tied characters. So where you've got double characters, probably with them, we're used to reading, um, say the word moon, you've got double O. And we accept that, but when you saw it in a non-recognisable letter shape or, or typeface, it sticks out to sort like a sore thumb. So to alleviate that, that repeating, <coughs> um, where there were double characters, there were lots of um, tied characters and invented um, ligature shapes so that you never got repeated um, elements all running together. So the texture was then um, built up and became just different. And again, that's an, another thing that would be nice doing to take something like this a lot, uh, a lot further. Anyway, so yeah. the, the question about um, do's and don'ts of, of um, designing typeface, I suppose I, uh, it, it, um, Come here. It, it fell foul um, from was it um, one of the one of the news groups didn't like it, and uh, because they thought it was demeaning to the actual script, because um, it's you know it was all done in the seventies and early with things like chop suey or whatever else, parodying different typefaces. Um, so it's a bit odd. So if the question is leading to don't um, don't parody another culture's typeface or script then I suppose that's a don't, but at the same time as, as a do, then we, we can learn a huge amount from the way that other cultures make marks. And that can then set us off on other ways of making our own marks. So as, as a roundabout answer, I would say there's, there's two sides to it. So the don'ts is don't listen to people telling you not to do things. That's uh, another question, yes. Yes, this one. Yeah, the next one with the, with the first. Wow. He came in. Mascot. Next question, go. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. The next question is there. In your process, that the first, it was the first question. Process is the clear separation between client work. Um, was that because of the two websites or? It seems that some foundries, um, if I take uh, a typical, typical example, a fond bureau or commercial type, 
typically, um, let's say 90% of their project are, are, um, are came from, um, you know, commission work published at the foundry. In your case, it seems to be uh, completely the reverse. From um, outside, um, maybe it's not exactly, but... Um, yes, I think a lot of the... Let me go back to this one here. So, so when you do Finland or things like that, it's not at all a commission. It's, it's your own project, completely from scratch. Yeah. You have an idea, you want to, you know, you want to go through it. It's not a revival, it's based on your, your actual through about type design. The thing you want to achieve, and there is no connection from outside world, inside, uh, yeah, what you have um, in mind. No, the aspect came from a commission. Um, that was for Christchurch Art Gallery. Um, so, yes, some of them do, but generally, as long as, if I'm allowed creative freedom, then it makes me, I, I can go down the route of where I want to go, what I'm looking at. Um, but there's always questions and the clients tend not to be um, that creative in wanting to try something different. They'll, they'll just do, they want something that's already existed before. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. That seems to be increasingly the case. Uh, they're quite shy and timid of trying something else because it's, it's not a known quantity. Mm -hmm. um, they, they won't go off on, they, I think that, um, I think maybe a type designer is seen as a hired gun to, to solve their problem, to make their idea work, um, to satisfy their, their ego that they've already sold to their client. So why, why would they let me go off and design something, my own research project? So my research projects, if you like, are the types I, re I release because they're answering questions that I'm interested in and make me make shapes. Um, maybe down the line, um, a client will go, well, that was interesting. Can we have can we have that or can you doctor it um, for for us? Whereas they would never get that way around if they asked me to do something original. Um, they'd come to me saying, "We've got Helvetica. Can you redraw it?" And it's just so it's a boring job. Very rare do I get a, um, a an, an open invite. Very rare. Yeah, very rare. So I have another question. Uh, so yeah, yeah. Christchurch connected. Was. Yeah, yeah. Another question is quite connected to that kind of things. Um, but you already have some, um, some um, in your presentation, you already answer partially to the question. But maybe you can discuss about what do you think about such uh, designers who are repeating themselves to find the best ideal shape. See, it's especially true with Gerhard Unger. He, especially on the second part of his career to rep repeating the same shape until the ideal, uh, the ideal G, the ideal D or A, who seems always the same, but always better. I suppose you're always a product of, of your era um, and you, ha you naturally have the shapes that you like um, and go back to. Uh, I suppose um, I when you surround yourself you know, with all, all the books and look at the, the wider world of, of type and lettering, there's so many ways to make the same shape that um, if you approach it, approach it that way, then you, you can't help but always make, try and make different shapes. There's always another way of making a shape. Mm -hmm. If you, the computer will slavishly let you create the same shape. Um, that's why increasingly now we'll, we'll draw and make trace drawings and then go to the computer maybe after a month of doing prep work. Um, so the sketchbooks, uh, the, the sketchbooks, so there's one for every typeface and there's always a huge amount in, in there, which before it ever goes digital, um, uh, just, just to, to keep the shapes um, different and away from being the same shape. When I go to on screen, you know, it's so easy to draw um, because it's such a clinically clean line to draw um, a stem which is straight with no feeling to it, you know, and then you really have to know where you want to go in order to make that shape what you want. And it's easy to give up. So I can imagine um, if you haven't got something, a vague idea in your head where you want to go, then you'll just accept or you'll, you'll make it look good 
in the context of the screen when it's this big <coughs> out of context with other letter shapes. Um, yeah, I think, I think designers, it's not my path. I was taught at college to always do things differently. We, you know, I was never taught, um, we were taught that it's up to us to create design, uh, not to just copy. And also I grew up in the 70s. Um, so I've seen all the stuff which is trendy now and I didn't like it then. So why would I do that? You know, so there's always, there's always a way forward. There's always more. It's never, never passed. Yeah. Maybe uh, this one, this question is little uh, connected to the to the previous one. <coughs> so you refer to the you know the um, uh, all you deal with technology, or it limits you or not. You already say that okay, I prefer to stay um, on paper a long time to don't be uh, acclimated too too quickly to the um, to the easy way to do the vertical stem with no with no no feeling on it. But in reverse way, maybe the technology um, push you to think in, in different way? Well, this was an interesting question because um, when we started, <coughs> we had lots of experimentation. And you obviously had all the random fonts and Beowulf and things like that, which you can't do now. Um, you know, all we have, and we've grown up with a multiple mastering, so which we use, a, use as a tool. So what we seem to have nowadays <coughs> is nice animations across an axis. The, the clever stuff seems to have fallen away side. So the tools are being developed um, like Obsidian or whatever to, to manipulate the line <coughs> to make a, a display typeface. But what you've lost at the same time is, is the clever bit, which you had maybe 20 odd years ago, all the random stuff and the ability. Why, why is that gone? Um, another... Um, Thing here, yes, there are. There were ideas a long time back. Was at A Type I Leon, I picked up, um, I picked up that, and came across uh, Super Veloz, yeah, which was um, type and things made out of elements, and, and it, you know, it's all it's been done now. Um, it's been digitised and put up, but it's um, very complicated. And the whole point of it, it should be easy to use. So the technology is not there to make that idea easy to use. So there's no point doing it. So that, that kind of thing shelved. One of the ideas for, um, uh, for Christchurch Art Gallery back in 2001 was um, based on this kind of thing, was um, to make a set of, of elements that could be plugged into a, a, a root letter form because they're New Zealand, a bit like Crowded House, four seasons in one day. It was going to be... Um, four sets, four seasons that could be put together to make letter, letter shapes. Um, but it's just too complicated to orchestrate. You always have to end up with a base typeface so people can use it. And by doing that, then people give up and they won't bother being experimental with the, the type. So I, I don't know what's happened to Matthew Carter's Walker, if Walker is still used or if it's now being dumbed down. No, you know. we, we were in uh, Minneapolis uh, for Typecom. I was there with um, maybe some people here present today, and we were at the at actually the place, but they use uh, only the basic sans serif uh, yeah. old caps with no effects. Yeah, so, so it's, they, re they remove everything. Yeah. Yes, they, they remove everything. But so people there. are lazy. It's all there. It's all been done, but people are naturally lazy and they can't be bothered. So yeah. I, I question more the user not the designer, we can all go off and design what we want, but the yeah. user has to put their side into it. I don't know if they are necessarily taught that way anymore or have the time to do it or the inclination. Yeah, but, but it, it's also because the art director change. So the, the people who, are, who order the, the commission the typeface in the 90s is not the same as the actual current art director. Yeah, but so the idea to, to, to do it is not the same. Yeah, yeah, but, yeah, but if they're still using it, people still use Helvetica every day, and that can always be made to look fresh. So, yeah, it's, it, well, type is only one part of, of the whole work. You know, you've got colour, image, everything. So, it's the designers need to work harder. Uh, so we can do it let's, different tools. Let's go to another question the English accent. Uh, well, I, can't, I can't help who I am. Yeah. <laughs> Okay. Um, it's, it's, um, 
I don't know, because I don't see that. I mean, I, I, I sort of saw it with bliss, but I don't see it in other things. Um, but I've, I've been um, aware of um, James Mosley's, um, you know, when he's talking about vernacular um, and, and the proportions. So I suppose there's always that. Um, as a, a, but that's only one. I mean, if it's not, say, square proportion, then it's classical Roman or say like the, the French, you do that thing where you have very condensed or very wide, you know, mm -hmm. so um, there's, there's different, uh, but they're all stereotypes. So it'd be nicer to think of, of um, designing type in, in in a different way, I suppose. I was writing something earlier because I've been asked to, to write a bit on Will Carter's contribution to British type design, which there isn't really. So it's more um, about his his um, observation of letter. And there was something quite interesting in one of the gravestones he did, which was the Carter Cats. This is um, Will Carter. Um, and they're very square and, and robust, um, which then makes me think of all the bath letter and the vernacular. So I, have a, I naturally sort of like those kind of shapes more than um, I suppose the Roman shapes the classical proportioning because you know what what's classical it's just it's just a word i mean things i'm looking at the moment is um medieval um looking at the roots of modernism so i'm going back through uh arts and crafts to gothic revival which is then back into well, british with gothic revival um in, in one way so ruskin and early ideas pugin and uh, that was a, a different take on classical. What, what it was seen as, as um, barbaric, uh, but only in the eyes of, of the people who want to tell you the story. So it's just different, different meta shapes. I mean, a lot of people agree, seem to agree now that Trajan's column isn't the best bit of lettering in the world. So, um, you know, but it, it was moaned about for so long that it was. So there's a lot of baggage. So you should take everything with a pinch of salt. So, so you, um, if we go a little bit on that, uh, that question, um, there is always people saying that, uh, okay, Jeremy Typeface looks very English, or uh, Martin Myers looks very Dutch, Jean-Francois looks very French, uh, you know, Christian Schwartz looks very American, whatever. Uh, do you think that uh, it's re uh, the reality, or it just because their style is so strong, because they are they have certain reputation or people looking at what they do, they're doing. So by, by analogy, okay, they, they know that Martin Mayer is Dutch. So Martin Mayer becomes the style of Dutch typeface rather than, the, rather than reverse. What makes the Dutch style Dutch? It's not because it's Dutch, it's because of the style of the designer. Um, I suppose the Dutch one's easy to know because it was... Um Crimpen and um, Unger, and they do quite high arches. It was a, there's a very uh, Dutch letter shape, which is easy to replicate. Um, mm -hmm. it, the interest is to know if there's a sensibility beyond that. Obviously, there's a load of um, um, Dutch designers that, that don't do that. Or if you were trained in that country, does that make you a Dutch designer? So, or, you know, not necessarily the case. Um, do people fight against that? Um, there are lots, plenty of designers in Britain who um, don't necessarily design what you would say is an English typeface. You know, yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Or, or is the baggage you're looking at because of the history of Gill and Baskerville? So I have a, a, a stupid question like that. <laughs> um, well, they're, they're both fun. It depends on the job. Um, it depends <laughs> on what, what's interesting. I mean, serious are less popular, they're, they're harder to do, but at the same time, sans are, are hard in their own way, because in a service, there's lo lo lots of places to hide, um, where in a sans, there's nowhere to hide. You know, it's, um, I, I tend to think that the sans works, w sans almost has to have a level of construction behind it, where serif has to have more calligraphy behind it. Um, um, a, a constructed serif looks awkward, Whereas a, a soft sans looks quite whole as well. So they must work independently. Um, you know, some things don't I mean, obviously, the, what was the one that um, Zap did? 
um, Palatina Sands. It's just like it has moments, but it's generally quite ugly. It's just something something uncomfortable. It's like, it's like it's like a like a child molester. It's, it's not it's not it's not it's not right. Whereas and um, you know constructed serifs just look awkward too. They, they, they need movement to some degree. Um, so let's go for another question. If there is nobody, oh, there's nobody another question. One. Yes, so another one. L let's go to uh, you know or to be an independent. independent. Oh, yes. Well, Why well, you are independent? Why you are alone in your room with your dog? Well, I couldn't afford to employ anybody. That has always been the case. And, and I'm a control. Nobody freak. want to go to Cambridge to work with you. Oh well, yeah, yeah, yeah. You had questions, but um, when I, well, when Tom helped me with um, when I extended the typeface to open type in 2003, oh. designing a typeface, and then it's passed to someone else to master it. Um, I don't understand that because I'm forever rechanging all the outlines as I'm spacing it and hinting it and everything else. So if you pass it to someone else to hint it or someone else to kern it, do they have the the uh, the ability or the same level of understanding to make the decisions to alter the letter shapes, or does it yeah. keep having to come back to you in order to change it and then go back again? In which case, it's just <laughs> takes ages. Yeah, you, you know, I exactly uh, had this experience uh, two days ago. We are looking to the kerning of some swash of the castle we worked on, and we changed the shape because of the kerning. Mm -hmm. Some of the element of the swash doesn't match very well. Uh, you know, they are just at the extreme limits to be better kern. You know, to have better kern, we can change a little bit. So we have to change uh, the, the Y or cert certain letter to make the kerning better or the spacing better. But it was at the time of the kerning stage, so we have to come back to the design. But still we have some exchange because of the team we, we discussed together and say, okay. But it's not to give away the, the typeface to someone else who is the other side of the planet or, or works apparently. It's more like a, a team in different place, but work very closely together. With well, that, makes that makes sense with the same room, yeah. But so I know that people work globally, so that, and that I can't see how it does work. Um, yeah, yeah, same for me. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm not able to work with people outside. They need to be here to work, or, or because of confinement, they are outside, but they know very well how we work. So mm. really, the, the, the team is very tight. And when people send portfolio and say, "Can I join your team?" and I'm staying in in um, Hamburg or Barcelona, whatever, uh, they say, no, it's not possible. We are not, we are too, too separate. It's, you will not understand what all we work. It's, it doesn't work. So yeah, it's exactly what you say. But could you say something about, um, about producing or publishing or marketing a typeface to market a typeface? Um, uh, well, I, I always, I always place adverts when I started, so 97, I think, um, 96, 97. Um, it was easier then. Now the magazines have all gone. It's more problematic. Um, I was always wary of digital adverts. Um, they seem a bit scrappy and annoying. Um, I never got anything back from uh, the advertisers. They always promised you sort of click-through rates and everything else and feedback. They never did. And when you did get it back, it was a bit useless. So that wasn't much good. I've, um, at the moment, um, we're not placing adverts. Well, I'm doing with I. I booked a couple with I, because I will always will with I, I Magazine. But um, this year, we're not advertising. We're developing um, more on the social media, um, our email list. Um, so I've got two years ganged up. Um, so we'd, we'd, every quarter we're focusing on a different typeface over the next two years. So we did Shaker, we're currently doing Enigma. Um, and that's, part of all that was developing the gallery on the website. Um, which is, Can you show that? Can you show that? Yeah. So This was the gallery, which was um, just um, the way that it, it way that it works is if if I'm logged in, if I go 
I'll pick something in, let's pick an interesting typeface, maybe. Oh, I better log in. <clears throat> So, okay, so we go to make art, which I can do, you can't do. We type in a load of bits and pieces. Uh, and I can create, it will make a, an image, and I can invert that. I'll try again, let's try um, a different weight. So I can sit here quite happily for, for hours. I can rotate it, um, do whatever. Once I get the image, I can then save the image. So the, um, all those uh, have gone into the gallery. Oh, wake up. Um, and then when you, I can then post it onto Twitter uh, or, or anybody can do that. And then that also links to the explore. So go to a new one. Um, So another part from the gallery was um, the Explore, which is um, a large canvas with uh, that has a theme on each one. So here you um, and you can click on the thing that tells you which typeface or which font from the family is used, and that will link back to the typeface. So these are um, these are new uh, are new things that would have done end of last year, ready for this year, and different ones will be put in every quarter. So that's more what I'm doing now marketing wise. Um, and then that they link together with uh, issues of footnote. So that was the last footnote, which was done, which focused on Enigma. Introduced, um, just really reappraised um, where Enigma came from, uh, what it can do, um, how it's been upgraded, um, some of the detailing a um, few of the bits and pieces, some of the development. And then the last page is looking at studio type, which is all the design story for it. That tells you all about um, what was behind Enigma. Um, where was it gone? Uh, and then, yeah, the font tester or the PDF files. So I don't... Um, Advertising is sort of changed a, a, a little bit because the other part of your question is how can you um, quantify and measure the success? It's um, it's always been more about awareness, uh, not about selling. Years ago, you place an advert and you could guarantee maybe 20 sales off the ad in over a week or two. Um, and then it would slowly, after the advert moved, it would disappear. Nowadays, nothing happens. It's, um, it's quite dead. <laughs> so there's no point. Um, we'd realised last year, the year before, that we were just throwing money away. We, um, we tried sponsorship. We've, we've done inserts, uh, mailers, um, but everything becomes quite prohibitive. So now this year, we're looking at um, social media and this two-year campaign on, on the typefaces, again, just to raise awareness over them, over the, the library, and see if that has any effect. And if it's the same or nil, then it just proves that advertising wasn't really worth anything if the income you know, stream is the same. Yeah. I recall we have a discussion like that every 10 years about uh, does it make sense to send a thousand of euro to iMagazine when you don't know exactly what's happening in, in return? No, it's, 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 aware, it's awareness. I mean, the good thing with i, while I was stick with i, is because it's a high quality book that people put on a shelf and they reference where the magazine is a throwaway. So Design Week used to be very good, um, but that died and the website is just useless. Creative reviews is useless. Um, you know, Baseline was, was okay because it had a 47% readership in North America. So it's quite good for North American market, but that's pretty much dead. So yeah, it's all, it's all gone. And that, that's obviously all changed at the same time as um, uh, the industry shifting with all the subscription changing. So it's, so in a way, it's um, going back to the other thing about um, designing, instead of doing 
why each typeface is different. As a designer, you've got to work harder. There's no point designing what's already out there um, because there's, there's 20, 30, 100 versions of the same thing. So, and if you can't compete against a subscription model, uh, it's not included on there, or it's not free for download, then no one will bother. So it's just, it takes a year to do plus, so why do it? So you are not, um, so, so to come back to independency, you are not on Creative Cloud. You are not uh, distributed by uh, anyone like uh, Monotype or no. MyFont or whatever. No. Nothing, nothing, yeah. On, on, do you, yeah, do you, sometime do you think about that to change in a space of, <laughs> in space of 20 years? I have, I've done the switch. In the beginning, I was exactly like you saying, okay, I will never go to through such panel. I will be independent, something like that. And I decide um, at the end of the 2000 to go with Photoshop. And to have very few more, my phone when, when it was open, but for typeface, we are never updated since 10 years at my phone. We never put anything new. <laughs> uh, for stupid reason, we keep the same amount of percentage as when it was launched. So the contract doesn't change if we don't say hello. <laughs> yeah, was, um, but but yeah. ago, obviously, the early on it did with um, um, Bliss was Agfa, then Monotype bought Agfa, or rather, Agfa bought Monotype. And um, then within, within six months, they'd done things against the copyright, against um, the agreement. And when I found that out, I just gave them notice. They did it twice um, and pulled everything away. So they haven't, um, they haven't been good. So since mid-2001, um, I took everything back. So, and, you know, they, and obviously all that controversy with the font font library and the ongoing legal issues with that. So it just shows that it's a, it's a nasty business and Monotype will just go around and they released something the other day, didn't they? Yesterday yeah. was a tweet saying with their mosaic, you can now upload anybody's font. And part of that uh, means that it's available on any desktop, any number of desktops, yeah. because yeah. mosaic fonts are available to anybody. So who do I invoice once people start uploading my stuff for unlimited yeah. use? What do you think about uh, font Smith? Uh, to be bought by uh, mono, by Monotype. Why? Why such a company? It's very lucky. As far as I can, I heard it was the sale was five million. It ended very um very badly. Um, so obviously um, a lot of people were laid off. Um, only a few people went over to Monotype. I don't know where, what Jason's doing because he's not listed as a Monotype designer. So I'm not quite sure where he is and what he's doing. Um, Phil got very annoyed. Um, I said, what about me? Because I did a lot. So Jason gave him a million um, and, and no one else got anything. So yeah, it's just, it wasn't, yeah. Uh, so we have the last question. It's about the, yes, your beginning. <laughs> did I write yes. a thesis? Unfortunately, yes. Um, the first one, first degree of BA, I failed. So um, it was so bad. Um, so uh, they had gave me 100% on all the practical work and only got a 2-1. That was at Central St. Martins. But the Royal College one was... Uh, this was the Royal College thesis. Wow. Well, <laughs> which was... Um, from last that, century. From last century. Which I got a commendation for, which was bizarre. <laughs> because it was... Um, it, 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 writing is not my forte, um, but what it was based on was um, uh, it had about 14 titles and I couldn't decide and it was um, past, present and future. So the, um, the past was all the turn of the century, so 1900 and it started off as you would like to see in Paris and um, with the uh, Eiffel Tower blah, blah, blah. and then it, it led, this is what disturbance was drawn for, you see. So led up to the single alphabets. Um, anyway, so that was it, and Bauhaus. So the past was one thing. The present section was um, a conversation uh, between me and a friend about just present day ramblings. Um, and that was all set in very early uh, disturbance because disturbance was drawn as the end of part one, the past, this idea of a single alphabet. Uh, the fun bit was the, 
the, the final part, which is future. <laughs> and, and this was um, very bizarre. Uh, this involved things, which is um, tree geometry. So I sat in the park opposite college and, and uh, drew a tree and worked out um, all the geometry uh, for, for a layout. And from that, that became um, a grid, which I then used in a piece of work. So it was all very, uh, I think it just gave me a, um, a commendation because it was just so random. This was um, ideas for, uh, this is based on Bertolt Brecht. This is a, a magazine idea where instead of having articles running vertically, you have them running horizontally. So each article filled different spaces. Mm -hmm. it, it was just, it was um, very, very bizarre. It was at, uh, at, in which school uh, this one was? That was Royal College. Wow, serious. Okay. So, um, uh, does there is any, any more question, uh, guys? Nobody want to ask Evan uh, with your voice? Who want to ask a question? Open your microphone and ask a question or to say hello or whatever. I have a question. Hi, Jeremy. I, I was seeing some of your sketches and I see that some of them were outlined and some of them were like filled in. Normally, where do you begin? Which, which of those is more common for your process? Oh, um, outlines. Um, let me have a pixel fill. Well, this one, the Brooker one. Um, I, I start with things as crude as that. And then they may um, get even more crude. Um, they, uh, these are pencil sketches, so I have a, loads of those. This is the idea of breaking shapes down. It's um, the, it all depends. I suppose that one there um, is more, if I get to a shape, I tend not to color them in. These ones were colored in, in pencil just because I, the, the labored outline in pen. Another thing that I've started doing as well, all these were done in, in pen. Years ago, my, my dad said, um, use a pen, uh, not a pencil. Pencil will make you want to rub it out. So a pen, you have to know what you're doing and be careful. Um, so that's why I keep drawing more and more and more and getting scrappy lines. But admittedly, increasingly, I will, um, I'll do more and more pencil work now like these, you see. Um, because, yeah, not everything your dad and parents tell you is the right thing. Um, sometimes I might fill it only half in. So here I just filled it in because I was probably drawing attention to a detail that I particularly liked. Um, but a lot of the time they're just increasingly like these, which I keep very um, loose um, because I tend to keep them as, as a notebook. So they are sketches in my head. So when I go on screen, I know roughly where I want to go. Remember at Type Paris, when I'm drawing um, tracing paper ones, which I, I do more and more, um, uh, the, the, the tracing paper ones were um, more, more laboured. I don't use it for digitising, they just allow me to put them side by side so I can make um, a, an idea of a word shape up. And what I did do with Brooker was I enjoyed the process of um, pre-screen that I started painting them as well. So these are painted ones, um, a, lot, a lot more with white ink around the outside as well, just to slow me down and see what, what, what outline I wanted as opposed to the clean outline, how much of, a, of an error um, on where the errors occurred. So they're, they're a bit wobbly. And the question was, in this case, was how wobbly do I want it to be? Um, and I don't want a digital outline to be wobbly. Uh, I just wanted it to know where the feeling was in order to keep it alive. Um, so I'd say that I tend to, I, I, I sketch, I know that's, um, I'm also very, uh, I haven't got a lot of patience. So when I'm in the sketchbooks, it, it's just really, I would churn out so many, um, so reams of A4 paper, just, just um, instead of laboring over it, it's a, it's a speedy thing. Um, and it's very hard to get back into as well. So if you have a break, 
Um, and you come back after um, a few days, maybe a client wants something, so then the whole rhythm's broken again. And then you pick it up, or you've done so much work, and then suddenly you, you think, well, I better stop the italic. Or I know when I did Kingfisher, um, this was started, I think, prior to the Microsoft um, clear type job coming in. Then I had to stop Kingfisher because of the, the, the clear type job. And uh, when I went back to Kingfisher, it was so hard to start it again because your, your mindset was different. So there's a lot more than sketching again or going back over the sketchbooks and a lot of getting the head to the arm to the hand all working together um, to find those shapes, um, which you don't get on screen. It's all broken. So um, I, I keep it very much as a notebook to try and um, even the, the trace drawings, they're more formalized, but I know full well that, that they will never be the final shapes because once it goes digital, then there's a lot more stuff goes in to actually um, manipulate and bend and make them all hang together. But at least I've got a, an area of where I want to go. Another question, maybe uh, we will uh, put an hand to, to that, but maybe there is a last question to ask to Jeremy because it's already one hour and a half. It's quite a long time together. It's nice, but Yes, some have to finish their play or to start. So, yeah. yeah, please, please, please. You want to say something? Who? You? Me? No, I said, it, I thought it was only 40 minutes. So someone's, someone's paid for the Zoom. Yes. yes. Thank you. <laughs> so uh, who wants to ask uh, the, the last question? If there is one question. A conclusion, someone want to say something? To say maybe, thank maybe, you, maybe, maybe, uh, yeah, yeah, please, please. Maybe I have one last question. You, you, you seem to be getting a lot of ideas on paper and um, and exploring a lot of things. But uh, my question now is, how do you get rid of so many ideas to focus the the? I mean, you Will can't you fit paper? you. You can't fit everything in one typeface, can you? So how do you filter out and gradually? Um, I suppose at the moment, what I'm looking at is, um, well, no, let's look at, um, Brooker was, was an interesting one because I had a, um, a lot of my, uh, inspiration I get or ideas come from abstract areas. That's just, um, I'm sure it's the same for lots of people, but I just find that more rewarding. Um, but Kingfisher came from um, listening to Dead Can Dance and Lisa Gerard's voice. So it's very Moorish sound. It's not in the typeface, but it got me going. The um, Brooker um, came from the notion of um, a Balenciaga exhibition, so fashion and, and shape, and the idea of silhouettes and, and how could that be addressed. So there's lots of baggage, but um, that was also the same time I started looking at um, uh, all the expressionist stuff and more angry mark making, which came out because of being so pissed off with all the crap you see in just ge dead generic work being produced all the time. So there has to be more. Um, so uh, there's a lot of abstract ideas and then it's um, filtering down. So through sketching, some things work, some things don't work. Sometimes you have to let something go and the sketchbook is full over the years, I've got maybe about 30 or 40 sketchbooks, but they're all full of ideas that may crop up five years later in another thing. They're, they come back when something's right. So um, an early idea when I was doing Fenland was to look at um, a serif version of Fenland. So this was like 2012-ish, but that didn't, that didn't happen. And eventually some of those ideas crept into Hawkland, which was 2018. So the, the, the ideas do filter in or they get parked and come back later. And I'm sure that's the same with, maybe it goes back to what you were saying, Jean-François, about Unger, they always design in the same shape. But then he might be referencing what he did with, um, um, I was just looking at thesis, um, theory of type design earlier. And the, when he talked about the, the Alberita, Alberita, whatever it was, the Christendom typeface, and a lot of that he looked at first in 76. So there's, you know, it's, it's, it's all, it's all in your head. And as you all get older, you'll be referencing things that you, your, your prime time of studies is filtered. I still reference um, 
my art history, I still reference things in the thesis. Um, I can't change the way I am. All I can do is build on that and, and your, all your individual passions for things um, will always be there and they'll always grow and they'll always find a way into your work. No matter, no matter, yeah, no matter what it is. So it's, it's, the filtering is a natural, as you as a designer will naturally filter things out that don't fit at that particular time. But they'll always, they'll come back later. Um, so I'm not, I'm not worried of letting things go um, because they'll come back. What I'm worried about is that eventually you run out of time of getting everything you want done, done. So there's only a, a finite number of years left. Thank you. Uh, yes. Um, very nice talk. Very nice uh, discussion. You should have told I me. Think, uh, yeah, yeah. You should have told me at the was, beginning uh, if I was meant to do a presentation, not to waffle on so much. <laughs> you didn't tell me that. I hadn't prepared that. <laughs> no, no, but it was. Um, um, confused. Yes, I'm, I'm good at confused. It was very good. Uh, can everybody open their microphone right now? Yes. Yeah. Could you open everyone open the microphone? Yeah, just to uh, to uh, applaud um, applaud uh, Jeremy for what he done. Yes. Yeah, thank you very much, Jeremy. Yeah. It was very nice to accept a couple of days ago, just like that. On to spend um, yes um, a long moment, um, very dense. Um, the way you describe your process, it's incredible. The way you 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 put the level high on your own work, on your own method methodology is a is a is a very good model for everyone. Uh, I'm, I'm always um, super surprised of how you are able to be so so strict about your your creativity or to to manage to keep the control on on your own creativity to don't be uh, influenced by the computer by the facility of doing the, the thing immediately or to keep going to keep going to keep the line to keep your your your, your strength into your your style and everything it's it's absolutely wonderful it's wonderful you are wonderful yes um i'm really uh Impress in the good way. Yes, oh. yes. The process is incredible. We, uh, as a designer, we discuss always about the process is the most important thing, and uh, your demonstration is completely about that. The process. Yes, and it's oh, no, I, process is, is something you, you you start off by looking at other people's way that they do things, and you make it your own. And I'm constantly reinventing the way I do things, um, and trying different ways out. Which, is, which goes back to this idea of um, when, if you're doing it for a client, it's not that easy because they have a tighter time scale. Whereas when you're doing your own stuff, you have the, the time and resources to enjoy it more and to try different things. And, and that's, I think it's that balance of, of, um, which keeps, keeps it, uh, everything alive and keeps you interested as a designer. Because if you're just a machine churning out stuff for a client all the time, it'd be very very um, hard, be very hard for me. British, British clients are a bit um, um, thick. <laughs> they're, they're not very open to, um, not all of them, I, 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 the several, I've had the, the, uh, the look of working with, with several clients who have been very good. Um, the last one was Swedish, although a well, German company based in the UK, but the, the main client was Swedish. And um, that, that was a joy. The guys in New Zealand years ago for Christchurch was a joy. Um, but if they're an agency like a Saatchi or anybody else, then it's not, not much fun. Um, yeah. Yeah, it's um, too many egos. That's, uh, yeah. yeah, okay, thank you. Thank you very much. Um, so, um, yes, again, another time. <laughs> Yes. Always happy to talk about type. <laughs> <laughs> it was a very good moment. On a very, uh, very happy to see all these uh, smiling on, on the on the screen when you put all the group all together. <laughs> yes, yes. Pose, yes. <laughs> 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 little bit, 
His talk yeah, evening uh, uh, in June, July. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was very nice. And um, thanks to uh, Christine to make this uh, possible. Yeah. Thank you, Christine. Yes. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. So, um, uh,